So the most important thing that uh, manufacturers in the diagnostic and device space can focus on is making sure they've got really solid clinical data to justify the use of their product. Um, a lot of companies go to market without necessarily getting far enough through the validation or clinical trial uh, process, uh, which makes it very difficult for payers and providers to accept the technology. So making sure that you're investing the right resources in, in, in doing the trials that are necessary to prove to the uh, to the provider and the payer community that this is a sound technology is going to be key. Another thing that we recommend people do is partner with uh, with you know key thought leaders and medical centers that have centers of excellence within these within these spaces uh, to try to get them to participate in trials or to get them to adopt the technology early. Uh, the third area that we really recommend is making sure that the data that's coming out of the trials is really actionable. So making sure that anything that's coming out has the potential to really modify the, or shift the treatment paradigm or alter the way that physicians go about uh, managing patients on, on, you know, in that disease. And then lastly and probably most importantly is before you even embark on the process of developing these trials and collecting this data, it's really good to actually conduct research with the payer community as well as the provider community to make sure that they know what are the most important factors from their perspective that need to be addressed. There's a few strategies that can be employed by manufacturers to, uh, to encourage payer reimbursement, especially in the short term. If a company has a large Medicare population for their product, uh, leveraging the local Medicare carriers rather than the larger CMS organization um, is a very effective approach um, to getting a little more visibility and then also getting them to potentially um, accept the product via what they'd call coverage with evidence. Uh, one of the other key areas that we recommend is if there is, uh, if, if the technology is going to sort of hit a, a serious spot for certain large organizations like employer groups or payer advocacy groups or self-funded plans, leveraging that angle. So great example would be in psychiatry. Um, there's diagnostics that are coming out to better identify you know, which patients are good candidates for certain antidepressants. Um, when you've got companies spending over a billion dollars a year on antidepressants and you could take a test to better figure out what's the, uh, the right therapy for them, there's a huge potential for cost savings there and you can leverage that message to get them to actually pressure the payers that they're associated with. Um, and then the last thing is really being proactive about collecting information, in particular outcomes data um, and and product usage data from your provider community. It's a much more proactive way of, ha of uh, justifying coverage when you have those conversations with them. In terms of approaching pricing, there's really two important factors that manufacturers need to consider. The first is going to be the coding strategy that they use. They can either use stacked CPT coding, which will enable them to get some value and get payment several times very quickly, um, or they will be able to use um, NOC or miscellaneous coding, uh, which enables them to charge a higher price point, but they're going to have to work quite a bit harder uh, in order to recognize revenue. Stack CPT encoding is something that is an option now that may not be an option in the near future. Uh, whereas NOC coding, you know, while definitely more uh, labor intensive to recognize revenue, really, you know, distinguishes the product and gives the company the flexibility to set what they, what they deem is the most appropriate price. Most of these products are going to be out of network when they launch, which means they're going to be subject to out of network copays and deductibles. Um, and so if you're going to be doing something such as miscellaneous coding, making sure that you're building in a buffer for the cost associated uh, with having to go through the appeals process to obtain uh, reimbursement. So there's three ta tactics that uh, manufacturers can leverage that are really effective in uh, in fostering adoption and coverage and those are focusing on making sure you've got solid peer-reviewed publications, 
and making sure that that information is then available to be shared with the, with the payer and the provider com community. Another key uh, thing we recommend people do is focus on uh, key opinion leader development. And then the last uh, thing we really recommend people make sure they have is a very, very, very solid health economics and outcomes study available that they can share with payers and providers. In terms of, of fostering provider and, and patient adoption, uh, there's two areas that uh, we really recommend manufacturers focus on. The first one is educating the providers and the patients on the therapy that, or on the device or on the diagnostic that they're going, that's going to be used and on, on what the reimbursement process looks like for that. Uh, the other key thing that we, that we strongly urge our, our clients to do is offer services that are designed to make the process of prescribing your product uh, easier. That could be, you know, a reimbursement support hotline, um, financial and copay assistance programs, things that are just designed to make it much easier to use the, the product.